Go Cloud. Welcome to the <laughs> Wednesday edition, the uh, August Wednesday edition of our home studio show and tell. My name is Siobhan here at Edge Studio. I am uh, just going to continue to let folks in as um, I do a little introduction. Uh, if you have never been here before, welcome. Uh, we've done these, I think we started maybe in February or January, but like who's counting days and months? I feel like I've been staring at a screen since like, you know, 9 a.m. So like, I don't know anything about today. But y'all, um, I'm truly chuffed uh, to be here. Um, we have two charming and wonderful individuals um, who are going to show us their spaces today. And I feel super pleased to have them. Uh, before we get into that, I'm just going to give a few announcements about things going on at Edge Studio. Uh, our specialty classes. We do have an agent Q&A on Wednesday, August 31st at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. That's kind of close to this time if Wednesdays are good for you. Um, that is where we're going to uh, speak to Matt Ambrosia. Just like ask him all the questions and all the things you need to know from someone directly. David and I ask me anything. Talk about... Um, uh, these uh, agents sometimes, but we are not agents. So if you want to speak with someone, the class is super cheap. It's an hour long, uh, and we wanted to make it accessible so folks could just get some questions answered from this lovely uh, gentleman of um, of Camar Associates. We also have in September networking for voice actors with uh, Liz Drury on September 17th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, I see that uh, Robert's having sound issues. Robert, you might want to um, check your audio settings, leave the Zoom, come back. I'll let you back in. Um, so the Networking for Voice Actors class is awesome because it's about uh, how you mobilize and utilize your network to book voiceover jobs. For folks who are like, oh my gosh, the online casting sites are so challenging right now, um, Liz is going to try to get you to think creatively about the people that you know who will hire you. A uh, quick story about that is that Suzanne Pinedo here at Edge Studio, she told her doctor that the telephony, like the phone tree at her doctor's office wasn't, um, you know, sounding that great, but she's a professional voice actor and they hired her to do their telephony. So, you know, um, talk to people. For folks who feel like, oh my gosh, I want to die when I have to, um, you know, self-promote, well, I don't know what to tell you because this is uh, this is the world we live in in voiceover. Anyway, so um, if you want to uh, say hello in the chat, I just got a gig from a guy on my workout group. Your network is everywhere. We love to see that, Christina. Um, amazing. So, yeah, so let us know in the chat uh, where you are, how you are. Did you have a good day? Did you have a bad day? <laughs> Hope you had a good day. I would say that I had a fairly good uh, good day, but... Um, what day is it? Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesdays can be kind of hard. Hello, hello from Connecticut. Happy that you're here, Colleen. Great to see you. <laughs> so, um, okay, so what we are going to do now is I'm actually going to make sure that I um, <laughs> edit some of my privacy settings here um, to keep everybody. Okay, so how, so just to um, provide you all with the um, information for how this is going to go. Um, we are going to meet two voice actors and talk to them about their home studios. Um, the past couple of sessions have been, actually all of the sessions have been amazing. Um, we are here to be nice to each other. If you witness a person who is not being nice in a certain way, uh, shout it out in uh, the chat. Send me a DM. Um, send one of my guests a DM. They are both hosts so they can know they can sort of uh, let me know. Some folks might know what I'm talking about. When you have free events, all kinds of people could show up. So it's our, we're here to be nice to each other and to um, share community and to learn. And so um, I might need your help uh, in making sure that we uh, keep it that way. But I'm not worried. It's been quite some time since we've had anybody uh, of that kind of likeness. Hello from Whidbey. We got the UK. Oh, hi, Iris. I'm glad you were looking forward to this. We got Georgia. We got Chicago. Uh, this is wonderful. I currently plan to do an evaluation on Halloween and a demo on Christmas. Hey, holidays are for, um, you know, celebratory experiences. So that's great. So, um, oh, thank you, Erica. Thank you for being here. Rosalind, great to see you. And I am continuing to let the humans in. So without um, spending, you know, more time than uh, we need to on these introductions, um, I am going to get us going. So I'm going to bring, you know, to the to the stage, uh, our first guest for the evening, my friend Jeff. Jeff joins us after, uh, you know, his, his ninja workout <laughs> for the <laughs> for the early evening. Jeff, hello. Um, where hello. are you doing? What is this? Okay, let me uh, silence some individuals. Where do you join us from, Jeff? Um, I'm in Canton, Michigan. So I'm I'm like halfway between Detroit and Ann Arbor, where U of M is. Oh. 
Amazing. Okay, fantastic. You have um, strong winters and summers, I think, right? Like Yeah, yes. Nice and humid in the summer and nice and crisp, brisk in the winter. That's why we call it the, the mighty Midwest. Um, <laughs> so Jeff, my, my first uh, question for you, as I always am curious, just as a person, um, how did you begin your voiceover journey? What got you into it? Um, how did you begin? Um, so my story is almost like a lot of people's. A lot of people got started in the pan you know, pandemic. I actually started like January, just before it started, just kind of coincidentally. Um, I had heard about voiceover. I mean, you know, I was new about voiceover, but um, kind of heard about someone, you know, making money on the side doing voiceover probably a year or two before that, maybe like 2018. And, uh, you know, it's kind of thought about it and thought about it and, you know, had various small kids, you know, they're six and three now or almost, almost seven, almost four now. Um, so they were pretty young and it was hard, you know, it's hard to do almost anything. <laughs> for yourself around the side so um anyway fast forward like a year or two and my wife ran into someone or someone she works with um does voice over on the side and so my wife's like you know you should really just do it just go for it you know so like after christmas i just kind of started researching and researching and researching forever and uh just kind of bought bought some stuff and got started um jeff what's your what's your line of work what do you do I, so by day, um, I'm a front end web developer. Okay. So I'm just here all day, all night, <laughs> pretty much. Would you say that being a web developer means that you're not afraid of things like digital audio workstations? Yeah. Yeah. And I love, I honestly love like researching things and figuring out how to, okay, let me figure out all the pieces I need and put it together. And, you know, I enjoy doing that, that kind of stuff. So, and yeah, and I'm familiar with, you know, computers and, you know, I mean, it's still a tremendous challenge to figure out everything, but um, I enjoy it. Um, at what point in your voiceover journey, as we like to say, I love the word journey, y'all, because it could mean anything. It could mean that it's like hell. It could mean that it's just... <laughs> You know, so at what point in your voiceover journey um, were you like, okay, I got to start working on my home studio? Um, let's see. Well, so I moved about a year and a half ago. Um, and in my old house, I just, I mean, I just, I just couldn't do much. I just had a desk in the middle of the basement. Um, and I had, it was decently soundproof because I had carpet and I had couches and bookshelves and all that stuff. Um, so I just got like two rigid um, insulation boards, those like Pink Panther ones, you know, <laughs> and uh, put glued, cut them down the size, like seven by three and a half, I think, and then put soundproofing on, on the sides of them and just lean them, like literally lean them against my desk and my, you know, so I was just kind of like in my, you know, in my desk. And uh, so when I, when I moved, I'm in this, you'll see, you know, a little bit more, but I'm in a little room in my basement and it was terribly uh, echoey had short carpet it had, it's just it was really echoey it was a vent there that likes to reverberate and um so i just little by little honestly mostly this year um really started uh and i had just blankets and pillows and stuff shoved everywhere and um i couldn't stand that so <laughs> little by little i i i you know made it you know more professional right uh, this was you know, a long way to go but um yeah so uh, uh, little by little, meaning you didn't suddenly invest thousands of dollars at once. Yeah, I mean over the <laughs> over the course of a, a few months, yeah, I, it it definitely uh, added up. But um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, just kind of piece by piece, you know, research by research, and you know, got this and added on and added on and upgraded this and mm -hmm. so yep, it was it was it was a month you know months long process, but. Um, just need to be done. Aesthetics is kind of important to me, you know, to a degree. So, um, I like your space as well. In addition to mm -hmm. being functional, you're going to spend all this time alone in it. So, yeah, yeah. amazing. Well, Jeff, um, would do you want to give us the the tour? Are you ready? Yeah. Can I, um, like link through my phone and then do that? I'm not. Sure, I wasn't. I'm not sure how to like yeah, be totally. mobile. If you, if you're, um, if you want, is your phone, are you signed in on your phone to the meeting? No, I can, I can do that right now. Um, oh, shoot. Okay. I might have to download it. Um, 
I'm really prepared for this. So maybe I'll just take my computer around. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My only advice is just to uh, go go slow with your pans, you know. Live TV, Scott says. <laughs> yep. Sorry, I missed I missed the advice. What was the advice? Oh, just to move your camera slowly so that um, uh, you don't give us vertigo. I will try. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this is, um, you know, kind of like I'm kind of in the back corner. Um, if you can see, kind of see that. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, it's just, just this small, kind of small room. Um, and I just kind of like made this corner of my room, you know, my, my studio. Um, and so in the back corner, you can see I have like, you know, I actually have sound treatment, yeah. you know, kind of taped on the walls yeah. um, on both sides. And, you know, it took me a while to figure out how to like create like a, a an actual like booth um, experience, you know, just like sound treatment on all sides. So what I did is kind of set up, um, I set up this, um, you know, curtain mm. and I got these like soundproof curtains that I can basically just, you know, I can just pull, pull that across mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On, the, on the side and then on the back. Um, I got the other, the other curtain over here. Yep. Um, so I basically just pull it, pull it on the back of the, the desk, pull it on the side of the desk. And then that kind of gives me like a um, sort of a booth, um, but it works pretty well. Um, they're, they're like sound absorption um, curtains. Um, and yeah, it, it actually does a pretty good job. Um, and then I have, you know, some stuff on the ceiling as well. Um, I need to kind of upgrade that, but um, that's sort of the, the setup there. Uh, and where's your where's your microphone? I think I saw it. It's in front yep. of you, right? So, yeah, it's kind of like the desk, the desk view. Yeah. Um, microphone just off to the side. I guess grab it. Yeah. Pull it over. Pull it over. Um, and then I can just kind of, you know, do my work there. Um, and this is obviously normally where my laptop would be, my MacBook. Um, so yeah, I just I just I just pull it over. You know, and, and get to work. Amazing. Um, my dear ones, I'm putting in the chat, Jeff uh, generously gave us uh, his list of gear. So all those questions you might have about what, what is going on in this space, I've just dropped into the chat. Uh, his microphone, the arm he's got for it, the interface he uses, the, you know, the, the Scarlet, a tried and true, um, and Adobe Audition. <laughs> yes. Uh, we got this, this speakers, this headphones, sound treatment. A lot of these things might be familiar to folks at this point. Um, how did you choose your DAW, Jeff? Um, so I actually started out with um, Audacity for a good year, year and a half, um, something like that. Yeah, just just this year, I so I've, you know only been in this for a couple, uh, two and a half years, um, and I was using Audacity, and I. I don't know. I just, I just kind of wanted to upgrade. I, I already have, um, like the Adobe suite for various things and my wife gets it through work. And so I was just, you know, I, I eventually made the switch. Um, it just seemed kind of easier to do. It seemed like people are doing things a little more easily. People are always asking questions like, Hey, how do I do this in audacity? And people are like, well, you know, it's kind of janky or whatever. Mm. Um, and I don't know. I don't know if, um, what is it? Isotope? stuff works in audacity or not it might but um yeah i just i just kind of wanted to upgrade to to something maybe a little more powerful um so. yeah i think audacity is a is a wonderful tool especially if you're beginning yeah. it's a great way to like have one less expense and if you feel like switching it up as you progress i think it makes a lot a lot of sense jamie says yeah i find audition far better than audacity Though the ACX check plugin makes Audacity a vital part of the process for making audiobooks. Interesting. Um, uh, so Tara yeah. is asking about your curtains, Jeff. Are there, um, uh, are, what's the brand? Are they, are they specific sound absor absorption or sound blocking curtains? You know, that's, yeah, that's something I left out. Um, I don't remember the brands. Um, it'll, 
if you look up, I think I got them on Amazon. Um, I don't know if there's any, I could probably you know, maybe leave it in a comment or something on YouTube later or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you look up like sound absorption um, or sound blocking curtains um, on Amazon, you can, you can, you can find them um, and they're all, all kinds of colors. And um, I, I'm thinking about doubling up eventually too, just like have, have two curtains for each, you know, for, for the two sides. Um, but yeah, it, it does a great job of, of, you know, uh, blocking the echo or reducing the echo, um, especially since it has to go through the curtain, bounce off the wall, come back through the curtain again. Uh, it, you know, it does a pretty good job. Um, but yeah, sound blocking, sound, sound absorption, um, curtains. Yeah. Nothing, nothing fancy in other words, um, or yeah. nothing, nothing that he specifically sought out. Um, uh, Jeff, can you tell us a little bit of, a, a little bit about the dimensions of the space you're working in? Do you know off the top of your head? Yeah, actually, I tried to kind of gauge um, just using my own body, you know, <laughs> <laughs> laying, laying down, um, stretching out. Yeah, it's, I think it's about my, I think my desk is about 70 inches by three, I don't know, like maybe by three, three feet, something like that. Um, so I, I think I, I roughly have about six by six, I, I believe. Okay. And when I close when I close off my curtains, yeah, I, I have about six by six. And so I mean I can, you know, when I that's one thing I wanted to, yeah, I can't really fit a booth or anything in my basement. So I was like, I just have to figure out how to use the space I have. Um, but it's nice, it's a nice I'm a pacer and I can at least I can at least get a few paces in, you know, <laughs> while I'm thinking. Um, and then you know, the nice thing is I can just kind of part the curtains and walk out and walk around the room or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely spacious enough. I, I was really worried about getting a booth someday and having to be like four feet, you know, and just have me feel closed in, but you got to do what you got to do. And that works. I know my, my port to hall people, they, they suffer. So, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just not a problem that I have. Um, Jeff, there's a question about, um, your dual monitors. And I was actually curious about those two. Yeah. Yeah. One for reading and one for the DAW or what? I, yeah. So, um, generally I'll have my files, like yeah, I'll have my files open on my MacBook pro on my computer. I'll have, you know, doesn't really matter which side, but it, you know, happens to be the left side. I usually have my, my script open and then I have my. I have Audacity open on the other, on the right side, um, and they're both 27 inches, so that I, you know, I get I get to see a good amount of, you know, I can see a lot of, a lot of the audio without having to, you know, vertically scroll or uh, horizontally scroll, you know, a ton. Um, that was really important, just because I just I can't, you know, I want to see more, <laughs> I want to see more at once. Um, but yeah, it's it's, and they're kind of, you know. I don't know if it contributes to any echoing. I haven't had anyone really complain about echo, but um, they're they're also like ang, you know, they're kind of angled, you know, uh, they're not flat, so they're kind of angled, so the sound might I don't know, crisscross or do whatever. But um, it doesn't doesn't seem to really cause the problem. So um, I love it. I love I love it. And they're they're on these swivel arms, so they can, you know, I can move them up and down and swivel them around. And I, one of the best things I ever bought. I love. <laughs> For the space someday to have this kind of thing i think probably a few people feel that uh feel that energy as well um courtney's asking it's not a walk-in closet though right it's a it's a room in a basement am i right it's a room in a basement um and i wish i could you know i wish i had my my uh stuff together <laughs> i wish i would have been able to use my phone but um <laughs> So basically, like, yeah, it's interesting. I, this is my utility room, which is one of my favorite rooms in the house, funny enough. But yeah, it's basically just, you know, just little little room in my in my basement. And it's it's uh trying to orient here. Um yeah, it's like a I don't even know, eleven or twelve by maybe ten or something like that. It it would be a really small bedroom. Um right. but it was you know, it was used as like a little workroom or something before and uh, and had yellow, dingy, yucky walls and whatnot. But yeah, it's just a small, really small room. Um, it, inconveniently. So if you have the means, I highly recommend uh, using a basement room because one, it's always cool. 
um, sometimes too cool, but um, I, a lot of people complain about heat, you know, just like being sweltering in their, in their box. And, you know, it, it's, it's nice. And, and I don't have to worry about sound very much. People mowing the lawn and stuff doesn't bother me. Mm. Um, the one thing that does bother me is the water pipe comes directly <laughs> through my office. So anyone flushes or does laundry or whatever, sometimes they get water coming through the pipe. And then I have the, the HVAC system right next to me in the other room. So I just have to like, you know, turn that off if I'm recording. But um, so it's a little inconvenient, but it's um, I think it's it works out well with not having to worry about neighbors and such. That damn HVAC. Um, being <laughs> nice to even be able to have a basement. <laughs> <Ron says. laughs> I, I know. And, and a lot of yeah, most people, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm in an apartment or, you know, just I just don't have a basement or whatever. Um, so, I, yeah, I'm very lucky in that way. But yeah, I highly recommend it if you if you 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 know, can swing it or if you have it. Here, here, here at Edge Studio, Jeff and I recommend that you get a house <laughs> with a basement, guys. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you if you're thinking about getting a booth for your apartment, just buy a house. Just buy <laughs> <laughs> That'll make it all make sense. Um, I have one more question, Jeff. I was, I don't know if you said it. Um, what kind of voiceover uh, do you do, or do you set out to do, or do you aim to do? I aim to do. And generally do I've, I've done mostly um e, e, like I, I think it's called or considered e-learning um like english language learning apps you know i i love that's kind of my favorite work um and it's the most it's like the biggest client i have uh, the biggest re like regular client i have is uh, an english language learning app client and um it's it's pretty short form. I mean, it can just be an Excel, you know, an Excel sheet where you just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll, and just item after item, you know, phrase and word after word, phrase after phrase. And um, you know, <laughs> uh, I I like short form. I'm not I'm not an audio. I, I will probably never do an audiobook. I am not good with long form. Um, I, I actually, you know just i'm not like the best at reading out loud like I, I trip over things and you know i, I mess up i mean i don't know if it's more than more than usual but enough to where i, I don't want to do long form so i like short form um explainer videos and short commercials and e-learning and stuff like that um i enjoy that stuff and i like you know because i'm a developer i, I built a built some tools to like help me with file splitting renaming and stuff like that and um so i, I just i get to kind of use all the skills so i I, I really enjoy that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm really going to start, I think, going for more like e-learning and and specifically like maybe language learning apps. Um, I just I really enjoy that that kind of work. Amazing, and it just shows that there is room uh, for us all. I too am not sure I will ever record an audio book. I just don't know if I, <laughs> if I have the patience that many of you um, actually have, Jeff. Uh, amazing thank you for uh for showcasing your space uh please please stay with us it's so it's great to have you thank you thank you yeah. I am. Um, I come from the theater so i love my effects so okay yes <laughs> I, I miss an audience <laughs> It's true. We, you know, we 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 got to do what we can out here. Mm -hmm. Um, so I need everyone... to get one of those installed in my booth, just a button to like whenever I do an audition, a good job, just to remind myself, good job. You know, I really recommend it. I mean, I just I have these like I have this thing called Q Lab. It's just you just you press a space bar and you get your little sound cues and you got a little hotkey set up on your keyboard for it. That's you nice. Get... That's right. And uh, sometimes it's just good for the self esteem. Totally. <laughs> Totally. Everyone, um, this is Adam Clark. Uh, Adam, it's great to have you. Wait, I thought Thanks for you having were, me. I thought you were on Pacific time, but then I am on Pacific time. But did you say that you were in Exeter, or did someone? Is there another Adam Clark? No, there, there is an Exeter in California, sister city. Yeah, not, not, not to be confused with Exter. <laughs> Exta, Exta. Okay. Well. <laughs> I technically live in California. Where in where in California is Exeter? That's in the Central Valley, like right pushed up against the, the Sierra Nevadas. So I live uh, right below the Sequoias. How lovely for you. That's not this time of the year because we have a new thing that's called fire season. Oh. 
Yeah, so that kind of sucks. But it, it hasn't been so bad this year, but there's a pretty bad fire up above Porterville right now in Springville area. So uh, so then the the mountains kind of fog and 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 you don't you don't get it as much as the as much of the majesty that you do in the winter time when it's nice and cool and you get the snowy peaks and everything. Um everyone um, pray for Adam for the rest of the summer that <laughs> <laughs> like it, it hasn't been that bad this year so the the prayer i guess the prayers are working uh, so, so much. yeah there you go coming um adam uh uh can you tell us a little bit about uh who you are and what you do and how you ended up you know doing this thing well i got into voiceover like a lot of other actors by not trying to be in voiceover uh, started being a, a, a theater person uh you know got caught the bug in high school in my in the late 80s <clears throat> And then studied in college, moved to Orange County uh, and uh, went to college in Fullerton and uh, really vibed with the theater department there and spent a couple of years, made a lot of great friends. And then afterwards, myself and some other alums built a theater in Orange County called Stages. And we worked out of a garage space in an industrial park for about almost a decade. Uh, well, actually, we moved, we, we, we upgraded to a storefront in downtown Fullerton. So uh, I was with I played around with them for about a decade. And then, uh, unfortunately, the theater had to close the last couple of years because of COVID. But the group is still together, the core group. So hopefully they'll they'll rebuild the theater at some point. Uh, but from there, I moved on to uh, motion capture. I had a friend who started working for EA and uh, he got me an audition for uh, a James Bond, everything or nothing. And I, I landed the role of James Bond and kind of that took off from there. And I met some people and networked through there. And then worked for um, worked on a, a game called Devil May Cry 3, produced by Capcom. The producers dug my work so much, they're like, hey, you want to do the voice? And so I started doing voiceover and motion capture and stuff. And I did that. And I got my SAG card. And I started moving up a little bit. And then I had some family issues that needed my attention. So I took a hiatus for about 10 years. And then uh, when I came back, no one saved my place at the table, unfortunately. So <laughs> I kind of started off from square one but it was kind of cool because uh i mean i was very i was all studio recording and stuff so this was like a whole new world you know so uh, i had i had um what are the, the snowball microphones from whenever i was doing auditions back in the in the early in the mid 2000s and i was like oh we'll start with this and then quickly learned that usb mics aren't the way to go and bought uh found an at20 at2020 uh an open box on uh on ebay oh not to mention my budget was very very tight i was uh divorced from my family but i had i've got three kids so money you know goes to particular things so i only had a little bit to spend on this so i bought that uh bought that uh that microphone i, um, I found an interface and got some cable and secluded a corner of my living room with a quilt and ordered some uh some some audio foam you know on 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 ebay and patched it up and kind of cut off the corner and started auditioning on voices.com you know and just kind of started doing that and that and that and learning watching uh, youtube videos and all kinds of stuff and just learning more and more and more and then got some clients found some local clients learned how to network a little bit um had success on other freelance sites and uh now I'm doing a bunch of stuff. I got a bunch. I've got a few uh, podcasts that I'm on, and uh, done some independent video games. I'm trying to get into animation, so that's where my my passion is. My love is creating characters and voices. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but whatever else pays pays the bills along the way, I'm more than happy to do commercials. You know, mm -hmm. those are fun too. Um, and and you and your space looks amazing. I also thank you. I I just want to say too. I I was thinking about this recently, Adam. Where like there's no, there's a theater major, but there's no like voiceover major that I've like ever heard of, you know? No. Like <laughs> and the thing, and the thing, and when you study theater in college, they don't teach you about marketing and finding your own work. You, you learn how to audition and you learn how to memorize and you know, that's what we focus on in college. So whenever I started doing this, it's a, it's a, it's a whole new world, man. I was not, I, I would recommend it. <clears throat> anybody that's still of age of school age and is studying theater in college or whatever to make business as a minor or make business as a major and make theater your minor because that's what the industry has turned into and you need to you need to learn how to find your own find your own work yes and make your own way so that opportunities become uh, possible to you 
Yeah, because yeah. it's not just the auditions you're getting from your agent. It's the auditions and that and the work that you're creating for yourself that you that make it happen. Adam, do you currently have an agent? I do not. I am yeah. currently freelance. Yeah. yeah. That's that's just that's a fancy way of saying I don't have an agent. <laughs> no, I'm freelance. I'm freelance, man. You know, I, I do my own thing. I'm liberated from that. Look. Yeah, exactly. But if there's any agents on the line, I am not, you know, beyond uh, uh, pandering to for representation. <laughs> um, darling, will you uh, will you show us your uh, your studio space? Yeah. Um, well. Uh, I guess, well, from what we're seeing right here, I've got, uh, I've upgraded my microphone, but uh, again, I didn't spend anything for it. I, I won this uh, doing a uh, doing a voiceover competition. So it's a Newman 102, uh, which I love. I don't need a pop filter for it because it's built in. I just do it kind of off. You know, I don't, you know, from, from learning, you don't want to talk directly into the microphone. You learn how to not to do that. And a little tip, if you do come across a Newman 102, you can get a Seinhauser shock mount for it, which is $50 less and the threading fits the same, fits that microphone. So there's, there's, your, there's your first uh, cheap tip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, well, let, let me, uh, my booth situation, like I've obviously upgraded from the quilt in the corner. Um, this is my Mach 4, actually, version of my booth. I went from that quilt in the corner thing to I kind of built uh, an industrial uh, quilt with like some soundproof blankets and some uh, some other heavier fabric kind of made like a like a quilt fabric. My, my father has uh, industrial um, uh, sewing machines because he does leather work. So I had access to someone who could sew these up for me. So I went from that. And then from that, I went to another kind of like a large... Uh, I guess I, I called it a sleeping bag. I, 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 did, I it was a large four, you know, four-sided sleeping bag with a zipper. So I had an industrial zipper sewn into it to kind of make it you know, a little more secluded. And that worked for a long time. The only issue was I had to stand up for the whole time. And then uh, last year, actually the year before that, I found out that I had to have foot surgery. So I wasn't going to be able to stand up and record anymore. So I had to come up with something where I could either stand up or sit down. So I, I designed this four by seven booth, uh, built it all myself from scratch. Uh, and um, my big soundproofing thing is I, I discovered MLV, which is a mass loaded vinyl. And it's this really thin, but very dense material that is, that's layered in all my walls to help kind of seclude out the sound. Cause like I said, I've got three kids and also learned during, uh, during quarantine that, uh, I can't record while they're here. My, my oldest is an opera major at Fresno State. So uh, re scheduling recording time around her classes and her, and her rehearsal became very difficult, <laughs> needless to say. So, uh, so yeah, so, uh, so I designed and built this. I got a, a, a desk that goes up and down. Um, yes, I said mass loaded vinyl. It's uh, MLV is another, it's, it's kind of widely known as. Um, and yes, I, I'm, I'm also logged in with my phone. If you want to switch over to my phone, I can, yeah. I, I can take you outside of my booth too. And yeah, let's do it. Okay. Let me, um, let me, uh, I'm going to drop my chair down. Okay, great. I am just sort of, here you are. Okay. So I think, okay. So what I'm going to do, maybe Adam, are you going to stay on audio from where we I'll stay on audio from where we're at right now? Great. Perfect. Cause I, um, was just like the echo sometimes is insane when we do this, but here we yeah, go. Okay, so now there's a co-host, and what I'm gonna do is I'm also going to, um, when you can accept that, I think I can, and you start the video, I think I can spotlight you. Oh, okay, okay, start the video. Got it, got it, allow. And now there, okay, great. And I, I am curious. Okay. So I'm going to add the spotlight. All right. There we are. <laughs> All right. Cool. Hello. Hello. Okay. Great. So I, well, let me turn some light up for this. Now, now I'm going to get washed out on this one with mm -hmm. the light up here. There we go. So yeah, so I am working with not a double monitor, but I did a television and turned it vertical, which has the same kind of effect because I was working with a double monitor before 
I just will stack. I'll put my, my DAW down here and then I'll put my script up here or vice versa type thing, the way I'll work on that. And then there is my, uh, my desk, carpeted desk. I also uh, put in a little, some circuit panels so I could add lights if I need to with a, with a dimmer control. And this is all hard, hard wired into the booth. And then that's the corner there. Now I'm gonna step outside. My kids are watching TV, <laughs> playing video games. We got dads okay. in the house, y'all. Here we go. So here's here's the booth. I don't know if you can still hear me, but we can't hear you, but I can kind of hear you. He said, "Here's the booth." Great. So the outdoor. This is some, that looks serious. Yeah, wow. so it's all it's all held together by uh, butterfly butterfly clamps. Kind of looks like a big roadie box. Yeah. So let's go back out here. <laughs> and uh, out of that. So something I discovered, I don't know if you got a shot of that when I, the vents outside, something I discovered whenever I uh, started building this was that uh, I couldn't breathe when I had the door closed. <laughs> so I had to build a, a ventilation system did everybody get a, did, did you get to see everything outside good? I feel, I feel yes. Okay, very good, very good. Yeah, so I built, and, and this was something I learned by, so you can, we'll turn off the video on this one. We can be done with that then. Okay. Amazing, thank you. That was, yeah. that was great. So, uh, so yeah, so I built a ventilation system and I've got uh, and an, like uh, an clean air in and bad air out type thing. So I've got the one fan blow, pulling air in and I've got another fan pulling air out and again i discovered how to make that by uh by scouring youtube so yeah a lot of this i learned how to do on my own which was which was fun i mean well you kind of have to be i guess somewhat mechanically inclined to begin with and my dad helped me out too so it was a cool bonding moment for me and my dad to get to do a little project Look, so you that was be fun mechanically inclined or you can pay someone or someone who loves you could be mechanically inclined you know exactly exactly Great options everybody it's 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 okay um, everyone is also very supportive of you breathing. That's really good to know. We all want you to live. I appreciate and, uh, that. I know it's a really, I, this is just a loving community. Um, there <laughs> was a, a question, it, but it looks, I was going to say, Scott, I was going to say the same thing. It looks like a whisper room. It's like a homemade. That's kind of what, what I, the size wise that I built, I kind of designed that up are, are, you know, inspired by the whisper room. I guess you could say, I just didn't have 12 grand to drop on a booth, you know? <laughs> that was the thing. So, uh, so yeah, when I designed this, it was coming out to about, oh, probably about 1200 when I first put it on paper and, and, and approximated my, my supply needs and everything. Unfortunately, but um, from the time of the design to implementation, the cost of lumber basically tripled. So when that started to happen, I was like, gosh, I got to build this booth now or else I'm not gonna be able to afford it at all. So yeah, it went from about 1200 to about 3000 at the end when what when all was said and done as far as building is concerned but still much much cheaper than than a whisper room um but really uh, make sure you have all of your resources before you start building it you know have all your dot all your eyes and all your t's there's still little little mistakes that i you know like little just measurements and stuff where in the end i had to take some of the extra mass loaded vinyl and stuff it into creases you know that i had little gaps and whatnot and still in it and in the end it's not totally soundproof but it is a big difference to what i had before like you know you, you, my kids were outside watching tv while we're still doing all this so so it it, it ended up being great and uh I, ex I i plan on using this booth for many many more years <coughs> uh, they're uh, talking if the ac is currently running or do you run it intermittently no my fan is running right now and actually it's you probably can't hear it on your end, but I can hear it on my end. And whenever I, whenever I made it, installed it, I was like, oh crap, I just screwed up my booth. But, <laughs> but uh, it's just, that's just more my, uh, my own little personal, you know, everything has to be perfect type um, <laughs> attitude. But in the end, you really can't hear it whenever the gain is turned where it needs to be. It, it works out just fine. And I just want to say like in the, in the, everything is perfect kind of vibe, like, our industry has really changed in the past like three years in terms of like 
so much or the majority of their work taking place from folks' home studios. So I think there's like a, a different understanding of where people, of what we do and how necessarily like the most perfectest at all times, but mm -hmm. a pretty good studio can get you a long way. And progress is progress no matter what it is. I just want to say that out loud. I was just talking to one of our coaches the other day about like, he was just like, yeah, like everything's happening at home now. Not to give stress for folks who are like, oh my God, home studio stress me out, but um, oh my gosh, we would like to know the info about the fan. What kind of fan, what kind of fan you got going on? They, okay, well here, yeah, the story about the fan. Um, when I first was gonna, when I first had the idea of doing it, um, I, I, I um, ripped some fans out of old computers and I was like, oh, these will work fine. And then I applied AC to them and they went, <laughs> it just exploded. Cause you can't, they, they don't take that much <laughs> power. And I was like, oh yeah, these, these, these fans need a little less um, power. But anyway, so I found some, in, I found some AC uh, fans just at a hardware store um, and very cheap, uh, like 10 bucks a fan type thing. And you put one in one direction and one in the other direction, whenever you install them. Again, I found all that information on YouTube uh, about how to install it. And also, um, what makes it what also makes it uh, quiet is the baffling system of the of the ace of the AC boxes. There there's two large boxes about the size of my back wall. There's one on top about that big and one on bottom about the same size. And it does a zigzag pattern to where the vent is. And then also right here, you can't really see it because of the microphone and that that's that's a baffle covering up the hole right mm -hmm. there. So it's so it's, it's, it's extended out a little bit. It's just got a little bit of gap for the air to come in. And then I got the same thing on the bottom. So that also uh, baffles the, the sound a bit. Amazing. Um, I do, I, I skipped um, Scott's question here earlier, which is how does your SAG card affect things or does it? Always hydrate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when I, uh, made the decision to go on hiatus and, uh, focus on my family, I wrote into SAG and said, please put my status on hold. Um, so they gladly, and this was funny enough, this was before the SAG after merger. So I had called, I, I contacted SAG a year and a half ago just to see, Hey, what's the update on my, my status. Um, they said, just pay us $500 and your status will be up again. So at the moment I don't have SAG, but I am SAG eligible, I guess you could say technically. So uh, my plan is, but since I haven't had any SAG offers for gigs or anything, there's really no point in being SAG and spending that $500. But when the opportunity does come around, I, my plan is to go FICOR. Okay, can you tell us what FICOR is? Oh, yeah, fi probably people don't know what FICOR is. I I'm still don't know a lot about what it is, but what it does allow you to do is allows you to, uh, to work on non-union projects as well as union projects and in California, uh, that is an issue because if you're a union uh, in California, you can only work union things if you're SAG. But SAG has created this uh, foundation of SAG called FICOR, which is kind of, I guess, a soft SAG membership. In, in essence, there's some mm -hmm. things that you can't do in SAG if you're a FICOR member, but you still can do SAG jobs if you're a FICOR member. So mm -hmm. that's my plan is to go uh, to go FICOR. And yes. I love that. I love so the, the soft sag. As soft well. sag. <laughs> <laughs> um, Icor with, with an F. Right. <laughs> well, Lena's like, I need to know. Um, 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 okay. I'm trying to think if there's any other uh, things about your uh, your studio. Thanks for being open about um, the uh, the cost of things and the yeah. the aspects of your career that you're the sort of genres that you um, that you work in. Uh, yeah, going for SAG, says Gettys. Keep it going. Um, okay, wonderful. Um, I guess my, my, I, I'm, I'm my DAW on the reverse side, I still use Audacity. And uh, I initially used Audacity, Audacity as a, because of a, a financial thing, I cannot afford Adobe. Um, and I've been using Audacity for so long now, since I, I've been freelancing now for like about six years, since I came back and started working in voiceover again. And so I, my, I mean, I've got shortcuts and stuff built in, you know, I'm so <clears throat> pretty dialed into audacity that I, it's, it's been able to do everything that I need. So I haven't really found an, uh, a necessity for me to learn Adobe. So, yeah. Well, and I think that's important too. I mean, like when people are like, what's the best dot? There really isn't one. It's, it's like whatever you feel comfortable with really. 
I mean, I use a really unpopular. Well, I use the musicians one. I use Logic. Okay. Crazy. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, just yeah. throwing out everyone's like, what? Nobody voted. I did a poll once, I think at one of these, where I was like, what dog do you? And nobody voted for Logic. They were like, I, rem- I do remember that. I, I was, <laughs> I was at that one. <laughs> and you were so sad. You were so sad. No, but Colleen likes Logic. So, okay, we're not alone. All right, um, Colleen. Jim is giving advice for folks thinking about the Fight Core SAG AFTRA um, track that we're all um, on. And uh, there you I go. Don't, you I, can't evoke in elections. And I think you can't go to like some of the, sag sponsored like workshops things like that you're not allowed to but yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I just care about t- getting my money and my health insurance that's about it that's right we you know we got to make the choices we got to make y'all <laughs> that's right. um, Adam, your space is awesome thanks for uh also like bringing us in via your phone etc um yeah, you are great you. i we appreciate you so much thank you thanks for having me Last, uh, you know, um, 10-ish minutes or so, I think that's 12 minutes, I'm looking at a clock, I, I can count and things like that, um, I figured we would just take the last kind of um, questions that you might want to point to both of our gents tonight, if there's something you'd like to ask them both, or something specific, you want to head to one, um, it's a great booth, Adam, yeah, thanks, Jamie, it is a great booth that he has, um, oh, great, okay, um, I love this name, and I want to say, is it, I want to say Forest, like forest, or is it forest, maybe? Um, the ambiance, uh, we're talking to Adam, the light behind you and anything else you do for lighting, we like to hear about stuff like that. <laughs> um, well, funny enough, uh, I also studied lighting in college. Uh, so I was like, I was very, very excited about lighting my booth, but it's such a small space and the light from my monitor washes out so much of me so actually i have to take my monitor i have to put that on a very low setting very low light like almost amber setting just so i can get a natural tone and then i've got two ring lights also turned all the way down uh getting that but funny enough those ring lights don't it don't plug into my fancy little dimmer system that i hooked up for that i built specifically for lights (laughs) so i've got it into my power strip that's under my desk the light behind me um um also being a, a a light uh, person, I know that I needed backlight or some sort of light behind me to give depth to where I was, or else I was just this floating head in darkness. It's a, a five dollar light that I picked up at Walmart. It's a little spiral light, like that. That's it right there. And I mounted it to kind of raise it up from the wall a little bit, and it you know gives me that little background. I am all about things that look fancy but are not fancy. That's like my like. Not to say that that light is not fancy. It is inherently, it is fancy, but it did not cost fancy cost. That's what I'm exactly. saying. Exactly. It didn't cost fancy. Um, Jeff, what's going on with your with your lights, uh, your light setup? Did I see a, um, did I see a lamp? Is there a standing lamp in your, in this space? Or you got an overhead going on? So I have, um, uh, this like, what is it? Like a Himalayan salt lamp thingy. Oh yeah. Um, and I really like that. Just, just like a nice warm, you know, orange light. And so I also have, because I, I like lighting, I like lighting as well. I like to have some ambience. I have like two, um, I think they're Philips. No, what the heck are they? I forget what they are. I forget what brand they are. Um, but I have two like smart lights basically. And I can, you know, I can, I can dim and, you know, <clears throat> change base basically change any color that I want. Um and so I like that. You know, I got my campfire orange. It looks oh there we go. Um you know just different different settings that I can do um through my through my app. So I, I so I like blue with the orange light is my favorite. I love blue and orange light. A little cool, a little it's warm. So I love that you can uh, adjust your your mood. Um Y'all, I am not in uh, my booth, which is in Los Angeles, which is not where I am in this moment. But I can, uh, I'll show you my, my ring light, just because I feel like we're doing this right now. And say, um, it's a heart. It's a heart. <laughs> I know, I thought you would like that. So, uh, <laughs> Colleen, um, I, I'm actually, I forgot to post uh, Adam's um, list, of, list of goodies here uh, in the chat for people who want the specifics about his space. These two were so generous to just send me emails with content so that I can just provide them to you so that you can 
have it. Um, um, something else, if I could point out, uh, something I learned uh, uh, early on is not to skimp on uh, on your on your um, your cable, on your mm. XLR cable. Make sure you buy, spend good money on buying a good XLR cable because the connectors on those cheap ones, the, those things will go out quick and you'll be stuck with get break like that. <laughs> That's a that's a very important uh, important question or important uh, point um, about that cable. The stuff that you're like, should I spend this kind of money on? Uh, but it is um, it, good. Oh, Jeff. So Ohana. Hey, Ohana. Great to see you again, um, Jeff. Uh, if you are willing, uh, folks are curious about um, how much your curtains cost, or if you want to talk a little bit about if, if you even know at this point of a price range over time of like you know. <laughs> I was, yeah, I saw, I saw that and I'm actually scouring my, my Amazon um, history. I think yep. I got them through Amazon. I'm not positive. And I don't, I have <laughs> zero recollection. I don't think they were like, oh, here, the, uh, here we go. Um, so it's like, it's called Nice Town High End Thermal. Hang on, I got to click through here. Um, yeah, Nice Town High End Thermal Curtains, uh, Blackout Curtains. They are, I'm not sure how much they are. They are, I think 30 something. Kind of depends on the on the size, but it's not, yeah, they're not bad. Maybe, I mean, maybe 40 each, something like that. Yes, yeah, it's really not bad. Probably under so even if you buy, even if you double up on them or, you know, you save like four of them, it's not, it's not too bad. Um, yeah. And it does, it does a decent job if you don't want to, if I, you know, don't have walls. <laughs> right. You don't have walls you gotta have curtains and maybe you uh maybe you invest in those um in those curtains so um question for uh um uh i'll start with i'll start with adam uh adam what is uh what is if you had lots of money or enough money in this moment what would you spend on your studio what's the next thing you want to really invest in upgrading your style um I'm, I'm actually really happy with the way my studio is right now because I spent a lot of money already investing into it. If I were, if I had the money, I, what I would do is would be convert a part of my garage into a larger proper like studio space, you know, where I wasn't confined into this, I guess actually what I, the, the next thing I, I am going to, I, I would buy for this studio is some sort of cold air input. I mean, the fans that I have only pull in whatever the air is, outside completely you know at the moment so i want to put some little a little air conditioner outside of where that air intake is so it can pull in that cold air into my booth that'll probably be, that'll be my next investment um if you go back i think it might have been the may home studio uh uh session we did an la dude like built do y'all remember were other folks here um where like this dude like built this crazy he had like an ice box and he built this funnel from the ice box to does anybody remember I've seen this? those before. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. He, but and he did it on YouTube. If you want to go viral on YouTube, by the way, it's just how to videos. That's what YouTube is. You know, that's what we do there. It's how to. So if you want to teach people how to build a booth with all the free time you have. Um, <laughs> Jeff, how about you? What, what would your next thing be to spend money on in your studio space? I mean, other than, you know, I guess figuring out some space in my room or, you know, elsewhere in the basement and like building something, um, you know, like Adam has, um, other than doing something like grand like that, I just with this space, honestly, I just kind of want to add some more, I think some more lighting. It, it gets, especially when I pull the curtains. So I only have two lights that are like sort of in my, there's also like a vent, um, oh, kind of like a, it's not drywalled, but a covered, vent that runs through here um because you know because hvac systems right there <laughs> um so the lights are on this side but on the other side of the vent and the, on the on the out of the other i guess the front side of my room it gets really dark when i pull the curtains because the lights are com almost completely you know blocked so I, I need some i need some more lighting and um like i said maybe double up on my on my curtains and um just maybe you know improve the the absorption but um yeah and honestly like i was in a spending you know 
craze for a while. I was just buying everything, you know, buying a KVM switch, like a switch between computers and buying monitors and speakers and speaker stands. And just, I mean, another mic and, you know, mic, a better mic arm and just all kinds of stuff. But I was sitting standing desk and, you know, I was just like spending all this money and, and, I finally and researched and finally I was like, oh my gosh, I'm kind of done. I'm almost, I'm almost done. <laughs> I can breathe for a little bit, but yeah, just little touches like that, you know, just little improvements, lighting, and uh, yeah, I don't know what else I'd what else I'd add. <laughs> just maybe decorations around my room. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, get more of those. Get more of that blue uh, blue lighting in there. Um, yeah, positive, more positive energy signs. Yes. Oh, yeah. I got my little metal, my metal mic, and my work hard pays off. You need it. You need one with the cat on the cat on the branch going. Hang in there, baby. Yes, I need, need one of those. <laughs> oh, that's all. That's over here. Oh, okay. Awesome. Um, Adam, for you, what for someone who is just building? I know Courtney in here was like, "Oh my gosh, can I start in my closet like with clothes? Can I like even do that?" Adam, what would your advice be to someone who is just starting out? Uh, with their studio space what's something that maybe you wish someone had told you when you began on this process um I, um wherever you're going to record make sure you've got <clears throat> lots of things to dampen uh anything that might be reflective i mean uh um if you're uh if you're in a large space and you're trying to cut off a small space like what i was doing i had my it was in my living room and i had a little corner of my living room um you're going to get reflect even if that even if your little spot is very very secluded and you're getting great reads as soon as you start doing loud stuff you're going to get echoes from outside the room uh, in from the living room space to your microphone that was something i i had to deal with uh whenever before i had my secluded space and now i can do loud stuff and you know yells and things like that but uh, uh get curtains for your windows would be uh would be one you know Try and cut down any any glass surfaces any in your room, you know, or things like that. Any, and you can also get some. Uh, they make kind of decorative uh, um, uh, sound baffles. You can you can kind of learn how to make a sound baffle, and you can put some sort of decorative uh, um, tarp on 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 it to you know kind of fit the aesthetics of your room. Anything that can that can dampen sound reflection, mm. you know. Mm. Mm. Yes. Thank you, Adam. Uh, Jeff, anything that you wish you had known that someone had told you when you started uh, your process with your studio? Um, well, to, to kind of talk a little, just a little more about the, the space, you know, you can have a, you know, not super great mic. I had an $80 mic before. I think it was 80 bucks. It was like an MXL 990. Um, not an expensive mic. Put money in your space you know, get a good space. If you have an okay mic, a USB mic even, you know, and, and a really good soundproof space, it's going to sound a lot better. In fact, I, you know, if you have a really expensive mic in a crappy space, it's going to make your crappy space sound crappier because it's going to pick up all the crappiness. <laughs> yeah. Learn about, learn about acoustics. Definitely. Yeah. Watch some videos on acoustics. Don't make, and, your, don't make your space too small as well would be uh, that's some issues i had i would get a lot of reviews or, or feedback saying that your your recording sounds boxy yes so that, that was because i was in boxy. a small space yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you ever, people start yeah yeah i know boxy yep <laughs> no one likes to be called boxy no <laughs> no, one, no one puts boxy in a corner <laughs> yeah and uh and one I, the i think a really important thing to remember is i've i've seen I mean, professional people who are working on like television shows. I, I can't remember if it was like someone who does like voiceover on like Rugrats or something like that, like the new Rugrats. It was like some very, you know, popular show. And their space was just, I mean, it was just blankets and, you know, it, it was just, it looked horrendous, but it, but it dampened the sound and they did professional public <laughs> work. Um, and just sort of just remember that it doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be, you know, it is if, if it works, it works. Do your thing, follow your own path. You know, people, you'd be you'd be surprised what how people are making money out there with pillows set up on their table and just a mic in their pillow on their vac in their vacation home, or I mean, just the jankiest setups. And it if it sounds good, it sounds good. Nobody, nobody can see it. 
That is exactly right. Never look at Instagram and think you're seeing the whole picture. It tr mm -hmm. it truly is not the case. Um, well, Y'all, in, in the spirit of, you know, your own home studios and how you're doing things, we have uh, the expertise of Art Bruder here at Edge Studio. We do a Home Studio 101, um, 101 group class as well as Home Studio consultations. He also teaches digital audio um, workstation uh, courses and one-on-one. -on -one. So if you want to do a DAW coaching session where you can look at something together, he loves all of them and has the patience for that. I would um, not be able to because that one that's a lot harder for me. And again, I'll just put our um, our specialty classes coming up again, our agent night Q Q and A, as well as our networking for voiceover uh, for voice actors class um, in September. And uh, yes, please let me um, help you. Let me give you the uh, chance to. Oh, he's already got it in there. But let me like oh, here, Adam. I have a link. It's not linked though. I know it's here, but I'm 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 doing it. Here's your here's how you can click it, click on it. Jamie, I'm so happy that you're able to join us. It's great. Oh yes, and really enjoyed That's it. it. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Jamie says, um, these two again. You know, our, our this session is free because everybody is just doing it for free. So these are members of the community who pop in and hang out with us and show us their spaces. So please follow them. Click on their websites and um, follow them on their socials and just like. Uh, be a part of, of the thing. Christina, yes. Looking good, she says, in your spaces. Hell yeah. Um, we are, I don't know, my schedule is kind of crazy the next two months, so I won't be hosting. I don't know if they're going to, y'all, I don't know if they're going to be able to replace me. But uh, if they don't, I'll be back to do these sessions in November. Um, they might. We might have someone come in my stead for the next uh, two months. However, the Ask Me Anything is um, happening on Instagram Live on the 25th, guest starring Jen Sims at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern time. So I will be there to do that during the day times. Uh, but in the meantime, everybody, keep doing your thing. Keep uh, figuring stuff out. Keep asking questions. And good for you for coming to uh, take advantage of the things that are offered in the world. And I personally want to extend much gratitude to Jeff and Adam for taking time out of their day. They're dads, they got stuff going on, uh, and they chose to spend this time with us. So thank you both for being here with us today. And uh, yeah, I hope that everyone has a wonderful end of summer. And if you're bringing your kids back to school, God love you. That is a journey, I, uh, and I wish you much, uh, much luck. Everybody be well, and thank you so much.